the things we do for science. Starting off the news this week, NASA's InSight Martian lander has detected the first ever Mars quake, the third body to have such a geological event captured after the Earth and the Moon. This could be either from a meteorite impact or movement from inside the planet itself. Hopefully in the future, if InSight can pick up more Mars quakes, we may be able to formulate a more accurate picture of the inside of Mars. And I know us at the Benji Thomas channel are all excited for some more information about Martian geology. In other news, some incredible findings have been published in the journal Nature this week, as a team of scientists at the University of California have created an implant for the brain that can read the mind and turn the brain's electrical impulses into speech. It does this by picking up the impulses that would move the mouth in different ways to actually create speech, and then translating that to speech. It's not perfect, obviously, but the technology has been hailed as exhilarating and does promise to be the beginning of something far bigger than what similar technologies are now. The uses of this technology could let people who previously had difficulty speaking to speak with diseases like Parkinson's and motor neuron disease. To begin the paleontology news, we start with the naming and description of a new species of hyenodont, a kind of prehistoric mammal that aren't related to hyenas, but are in a distinct order from carnivorans. This new animal, known from a jaw, other parts of the skull and bits of the skeleton, has been named Simbacabwa kutoka Africa, which is a Swahili for big lion coming from Africa. Though this animal was not a lion, instead it's a reference to its position at the top of the African food chain. This creature was very large, bigger than a polar bear, and the fossils are about 22 million years old, originating from a deposit in Kenya. The bones of the creature were actually discovered in a drawer by paleontologists doing research at the Nairobi Natural Museum, and soon after finding them they realised their importance. Simba Kabua lived at a time when the world around it was changing significantly, and ecological transitions in faunas were taking place, as well as climate change. The evolution and extinction of this species and its relatives therefore provides an important understanding into how animals change during this time in this location, and the rediscovery in a museum drawer once again highlights the significance of museum collections. Also this week, a study just published in the journal Nature has examined features of the Berlin Archaeopteryx specimen using UV light. This has allowed the researchers to see parts of anatomy that are not visible under normal conditions, and they have found that the animal has more extensive air sacs in its bones than we thought, as well as a reinforced vertebral column similar to modern birds, adding evidence to the idea that this animal was indeed actually capable of active flight and not just gliding. And finally, we should quickly mention another study published in Nature this week, in which scientists used imaging techniques in order to produce a visualisation of the autogenetic development of the brain case in the living coelacanth. The study shows how the neurocranium and the soft tissues around it change as the animal develops, and how the brain is so relatively small in these creatures, as well as giving the researchers a glimpse of how brain cases diversified amongst Scarcopterygian fishes during their evolution. Thank you very much for listening to this week's 7 Days of Science. I do hope you enjoyed it, and if you haven't already, feel free to subscribe to learn more about the wonderful life around you. And if you have, we'll see you on Sunday.